Welcome to episode 8 of Downfall Mall. If you've made it this far into the series, well done. I try very hard to make the concept of a British bloke building a virtual theme park remotely engaging enough to last a whole series, but it really is hard work. I'm just not that interesting. Regardless, you're still here and I'm grateful for that, so thanks. Last week I poured my heart, soul and little socks into the park's main street, whilst this week we build a Horror Heights. Now I've never built a Horror Heights in all of my 8 years of playing this game, so this could be dreadful. Let's find out. As I always do, I shall present the finished experience first and then show you how it all came together. So without further ado, here is Downfall Mall's Dark Ride Ascent, including a cheeky little pre-show. Hey kid, it's Bandit. I see you made it to the elevator. That basement looked rough, dude. It really did. But our recon shows that most of the Zeds are trapped down there, so you should be good from here. Right, pay attention. This place used to be some kind of human genome lab before, well... Everything happened. Chances are, this place is some really decent loot, and maybe even something that Bandit can use to cure the infected. Okay, let's not get ahead of ourselves. Just grab what you can and get out of there in one piece. There is something you should probably know. Slam. Kid, this building, it... Sorry, amigo, the transmission got cut off. Anyway, let's get moving. Need to head up to the fifth floor. Yeah, the plan shows some sort of medical facility up there. By the way, it's an absolute miracle this elevator is still working, so tread carefully. Okay, gravity med, you can see painkillers, antibiotics, IVs, anything you can get your hands on. Let me see if I can trip the power on. God damn it, Slam! That was a bad idea. Keep moving. Keep learning, kid. Are you nuts? You've literally woken the dead. Time to bail. Quick! they found us! Boop us out of here, Jerry! Who the hell were they? What in the world? What were they doing here? Right, let's get out of here. Is that what I think it is? Grab it and let's get the heck out of here. Get out of there, kid. This place is gonna collapse any second. <sighs> well, if you'd have let me explain that this was where the outbreak began. Our friend here would never have gone in and now be holding the potential cure. Take a bow, survivor. They have just changed everything. Great work, kid. Now get yourself out of there so we can get that antidote back to downfall. After placing the ride itself, I started work on a very lengthy queue to act as a walkthrough experience before the ride. This involved digging down under the mall, and as we all know, building underground is super easy and doesn't cause any stress at all. I shan't bore you with the walls because it was just a lot of TMTK plaster, and I mean a lot. But here's me completing the entrance stairs in case you felt left out. For this alcove I filled it with piping to push an industrial basement theme. Next I created some warehouse shelving using framework, chipboard and a ton of crates and boxes.
To add more variation to the very flat walls, I created some exposed piping before adding some ducting up above. What horror walkthrough is complete without some zombies in a cage? I used chain link fencing and filled it with zombie animatronics. This would also be populated by the odd scare actor too, just for an extra fright. I added a door for the actors and maintenance access, followed by some area lights to create some of that cliche strobing. I covered the ground with metal tread plate, which is when I discovered the floor wasn't even, which stressed me out greatly and I haven't fully calmed down yet, I'll be honest. I added a ceiling using black panels, as I always do. To appease the health and safety person, I created a handrail for our stairs. So sensible. Moving on to the next section, I created a long hallway with some more industrial theming down the side. I used piping, cables, art shapes, chain link and TMTK cage lamps. I just feel like you need to know that during this entire build I was listening to this on loop. The entire build. Let that sink in. Moving on to the ride area, I walled off the space with more plaster and fenced off the queue before we lost sight of it. big hole. I chucked some random junk down here just to fill the space.
finally, time for the show scenes. I placed markers on every floor of the elevator to assist with the build. I then created the show building out of more plaster. Can you believe it? I never use plaster. You'll notice I labelled each level with the floor number and the sequence order of the horror heights for quick reference. With one floor done, I copied it up to each level. Starting on the ground level, I began work on the cure itself, creating a chamber out of biopods, glass, neon, an art shape, lighting, and then, um, you know when you've said something so much you forget what the word is? Are they hydro beans? No, that's not right. You'll have to leave a comment to remind me what they're called. Next, I created a web of cables rotated on a central axis. I created the room itself out of art shapes and panels, but please don't worry, I deleted any plaster that was covered up. I could tell you were panicking. I added further black panels to the edge of the room to create a void effect, the impression of a vast space extending out from the centre. I then covered the scene with some sci-fi fencing. Up to floor 2 it was time to bring in Reginald and Jerry. If this reference made no sense to you whatsoever, you'll need to check out my A Matter of Time series. But sir, it's quite important. Enough, Jerry! Turn on your bloody screen and let's get going! Here's the link. I surrounded them by boxes to give the impression of them rummaging for the cure, before creating a similar aesthetic to the queue. When it comes to lighting show scenes, I always opt for back, top and side light, because it creates wonderful depth and doesn't wash everything out. A few more bits of scenery to clutter up the scene before moving up once more. Now this is the first of one of our duplicate scenes. 
this one being the zombies behind the glass prior to them escaping. I created the walls out of, you know what, I'm just not even going to say it anymore, we all understand I have a problem. The spook central doors have a wonderfully plain aesthetic that worked well for our hospital corridor. I created Georgian wired glass using glass and chain link, and yes, I definitely knew that term without researching it. White art shapes create a nice shiny clinical floor. I finished this level with a whole bunch of zombie animatronics and desperately tried to hide the fact there are only two variations. By the way, it took about four layers of glass for it to show up at night, how fun. For level 4 I copied floor 3 removing any excess pieces and popped it into position. I opened up the door and let the walkers roam. Next, the second of our duplicate sets, the full hospital corridor. I used forced perspective here to make the hall look larger than it really is. I added decals, doors and more shiny floor. Lighting played a big part in creating the right atmosphere as it always does in dark rides. Once again I copied the whole set and positioned it on floor 6, this time with added zombies. The top floor had to be a key scene considering the additional height of the room and already knowing I wanted to utilise the wonderful view of the city. I copied the bio chamber from the first floor to house our zombies and spaced them evenly across the room. I played around for a bit to make sure the view from the ride lined up perfectly with the window. With all scenes complete I popped a roof on top going to the extra effort of incorporating the lift mechanism. Next came the final corridor of the ride as you escape the building. Sequencing the triggers was probably the most time consuming part of the whole process and I only cried a few times. For the exterior I clad the building to look like a skyscraper and started to introduce the vines into the build and it definitely wasn't an afterthought.
I wanted the finale of the ride to be the most infected, with more vines and sinew lining the walls. Because I hate myself, I gave all of our sets a realistic backing using pillars and chipboard. I actually had to do all of this twice because my game crashed and I lost it all. Yay! Some wires to hold up our lovely vines. Back outside I created a fire escape route. Do I take things too far? Probably. For the station I just extended the theming from the queue. Nothing too exciting. You know me, saving the best till last. I won't show you the complete exterior build otherwise we'll be here for 26 years, but here's me creating the entrance and ride sign. As I finish this beautiful sign, let me say thank you for being here. If you're watching this at the premiere, pat yourself on the back, I'm proud of you. Catch you next time for the last build episode of the series. Shocking. See you then.